Hello everyone. In this session, we discuss about factors affecting growth. We can divide factors affecting growth into before birth, the factors affecting before birth, factors affecting after birth, and social factors. So the factors which is affecting before birth are one of the important factors is fetal hormones that is insulin and insulin like growth factors are the very important hormones which helps in fetal growth and thyroxine thyroxine starts producing from 12 weeks of gestational life and it's one of the important factor for fetal growth and also glucocorticoids which helps in organ maturation like liver lungs so only we give intrauterine steroids to mother to improve the organ maturation in preterm babies then comes placental factors placental factors so, so placental weight is directly proportional to fetal weight and one more important placental factor is villous surface area of placenta villous surface area of placenta increase directly if the surface area is moves it, it increases the dilatation of fetal vessels or fetal capillaries which in turn decreases the which in turn capillaries, which in turn decreases the resistance in fetal capillaries. So, increases the blood flow to fetus and growth of the fetus will improve. And also, maternal nutrition. Maternal nutrition is one of the very important factors which influences the growth of fetus. If nutrition is less, growth also will be low. Then the factors which is affecting after birth, one of the important factor is genetic factors. If mother and father are of good height and weight potential, then the child also will be of good height and weight. So one is parents and another is genetic abnormalities such as chromosomal abnormalities or mutations. The chromosomal abnormalities which decreases the growth are Turner's and Down syndrome. The mutations which decreases the growth are Prader Willi, Prader Willi syndrome and Noonan syndrome. Not only all chromosomal abnormalities or all mutations decreases the growth, but few can increase the growth also like Klinefelter syndrome Klinefelter syndrome and in uh, mutation Soto syndrome Soto syndrome if the child is IUGR IUGR means intrauterine growth restriction if the child is having intrauterine growth restriction after after birth the child will be having EUGR EUGR means extra uterine growth restriction then hormones also influences the growth after birth the hormones like growth hormone and thyroxine remember one thing growth hormone is never a hormone for fetal growth so in fetal growth growth hormone is never a hormone for fetal growth this is one of the important mcq question but after birth growth hormone is very much important for growth of the child and during puberty gonadotropins act as a growth hormone so which helps in growth spurt so during puberty gonadotropins acts as growth hormone which helps in growth spurt before that growth hormone and thyroxines are the important growth hormone after birth then if nutrition is good good nutrition directly proportional to good growth of the child then 
if infections are there in the child it decreases the growth of the child so it is inversely proportional to growth so infections are inversely proportional nutrition is directly proportional to growth and few of the social factors also plays major role in growth of the child such as if poverty climate emotional factors it is noted that broken family children will be short and there will be growth delay in them and education especially education of the mother is very important for the growth of the child and also cultural factors also influences the growth of the child now after this we go for principles which is very much important principles of growth principles of growth the important is growth is continuous and orderly process it's like the growth will be occurring but the rate might vary but the growth will be occurring continuously suppose during fetus the first of the first half of the fetus the growth is more then later the growth will is there but compared to this it is decreased then even in after birth also during first 2 to 2 to 3 years the growth is more afterwards the growth is there then decreases later during puberty later during puberty growth spurt again occurs and growth will increase so growth is continuous and orderly process it goes in an order but it is continuous though rate may vary but it's a continuous process growth pattern growth pattern of every individual is unique means the growth pattern is same for you me the person next to you the person whom you are thinking of for everyone the growth pattern is same every individual is unique means it occurs in same wise is unique means it same for everyone so it is cephalocaudal and distal to proximal the cephalocaudal and distal to proximal for example first in utero it grows first then the neck grows and arms grows first then the legs that is cephalocaudal means from head to the tail tail is nothing but legs we tell it as sacrum as tail but tail is nothing legs cephalocaudal and distal to proximal hands increase in size before arms so growth is of every individual is unique that is cephalocaudal and distal to proximal so growth indicates the well being of the child growth indicates the well being and health of the child and health of the child then this is one of the important this thing principle different tissues grows at different rates so we differentiate into somatic growth brain growth lymphoid and gonads somatic growth usually somatic growth is very much in first 2 to 3 years of life so first 2 to 3 years the growth is too much then and there is a it's very much the somatic growth is more in first 2 to 2 years 2 to 3 years of life later the growth will be there but it is not so steep the growth will be like almost plateauing but it is increasing then during growth spurt there is second this is during first 2 to 3 years there is growth then till puberty there is marginal increase in growth later due to growth spurt there is again during puberty there is somatic growth so this is a growth of somatic organs occur 
so brain growth brain growth is very unique around 2 to around 2 years almost 85 to 90% of the brain growth has occurred by 2 years so it's very important to take care of the child without infections until 2 years of age so after that it's almost marginal growth occurs so it becomes plateaued later so by 2 years around it is 85 to 90% of the brain growth has occurred by 2 years then there comes a one more peculiar organ that is lymphoid lymphoid organ it grows up till 4 years but it peaks its growth around 4 to 8 years it peaks around 4 to 8 years then again the lymphoid growth will slow down and it will become plateaued so 4 to 8 years is the age of lymphoid growth then gonadal growth gonadal growth so from birth till puberty it will be growing in almost plateau way then suddenly in puberty the gonadal organs will grow and reach the adult gonads okay this is how the growth pattern of different tissues grows differently that is somatic usually first two years three years it will grow then again there is no not much steep it will grow parallelly and with little amount of growth then it around again peaks as during puberty brain first two years it grows rapidly then almost it plateaus around and reach the adult 100% then lymphoid growth 4 to 8 years is the age of lymphoid growth then gonads will grows very much during puberty 